Okay, so welcome to our leader learning. Uh, tonight we're going to be interviewing Emma, who's been with Skillful Minds since, is it 2016? I think it must be. This is my third year of doing classes, so yes, that would be right. Okay, fantastic. And you were one of the, the very, very early leaders in the program. Uh, so you've obviously got some longevity behind you and lots of experience. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing about how, you know, you run your classes and, um, you know, tips that you have for new, new leaders and existing leaders um, because I guess, you know, we can always learn lots from, from each other. So I guess um, I will um, pretty much hand it over to you. Now, um, I did have some questions uh, which I've um, just lost. But essentially, um, can you tell us how you started? What was it that um, brought you into the space of wanting to teach people to meditate? It, it was interesting. I think I actually saw an initial flyer for a skillful mind retreat um, at, around Port Elliot when I stayed in Port Elliot probably five or six years ago. And I saw a skillful mind retreat in the area. So I contacted and initially I went on a retreat as a participant. And I went on a first retreat as a beginner. I've been doing some meditation at home and some of my own readings and research and really wanted to explore more about what meditation was. Um, from there, then I went to an intermediate retreat a few years later. And then as part of that, there was at the time a, a further day workshop offered to people that wanted to teach or share meditation in the community. Um, so I suppose my path wasn't that I went out particularly to search to be um, a leader. It was more that um, I was interested in developing my own knowledge and then along the way more came up. Um, so at that particular leader, maybe five or six people, and there was somebody also from Brighton, a suburb that I live in, um, south of Adelaide, interested in, in starting a, a class together and I think that's been really useful working with people all the way through whether it's people um, you know now it's more online which is great but having a connection and a community is really important yes yeah absolutely um, and when you started up your groups what background what was uh, your work background or how did you want to incorporate that into what you did or was it just totally as an extra or how, how did that fit in? Sure so um, for my work I'm a social worker so I do work with people. Over time I've had a variety of jobs and probably where I've shared meditation is my work has been on occasions with my with my work colleagues as peers so often we work with people that are um, quite vulnerable or disadvantaged and as workers that can really take the in as well so it's really important for us as workers to connect with how we are to look at our own resilience or and to really spend those mindful moments ourselves um, as I have had a few different Jobs. I think each employer has been um, different in how and how we could run that with or um, service users, I guess. Um, so over time, I probably started with trying to incorporate it with my co-workers, but I think it's important to let everyone around you know that you are running these classes because you just plant the seed in their mind because I can say that and haven't considered meditation or oh, where are you running your classes and even if your workplace is not able to offer you that direct opportunity to work with people to develop their own skills you're just spreading that word thoughts about meditation out there because um, you never know who you tell who else they can tell in their communities as as, as well um, so I find that it does help my work the, um, you know, personally, I guess, become more calm and focused, have things to draw back on. But also with the skills I've learned at work, sometimes in meditation classes, we come across people that are perhaps also vulnerable or are dealing with depressive or anxious thoughts. We don't know if they have a diagnosis, but something as well. So I think as part of running a group, you'd be working with people. So it's really important that you have some understanding in how 
um, how people might be feeling. There's some options for mental health first aid, but also for just providing that calm, reassuring space for people um, to work on their own well-being. Yeah, fantastic. And um, so once you uh, had the idea to set up your group, how, how did you actually, the physicalities and what was it? How did you set, the, set your first group up? What did you do? Yeah. So we, um, we looked at different locations when the room could be available. Um, we initially had some market stalls in the community and we could also advertise where, where the group was. It was a health and wellbeing hub. So we could put up brochures and flyers there to encourage clients from other services to come to meditation. We also put it on the Skillful Mind website and Facebook groups. We did... Um, some work on the local Facebook groups for the local geographical area. We had some advertisements in the local newspaper as well, which was free. Um, we also, I think, had a bit of a word of mouth. So it was people that we knew in our lives that we could tell. It was um, looking at what was around in the community. So I think we did some in, in the library. Um, there was a fruit and veg market stall that at one point I actually asked to put a flyer in each of their fruit and veg um, boxes and bags because that was in a, a nearby suburb and, and that was free advertising for us. So I think our advertising has always been quite wide and quite consistent and we've also used groups like Meetup and over the past 12 months I've been using Eventbrite as well and that just reaches your audience in different ways. So there'll be people that live close and will pick up the marketing, but people that look for meditation or classes online. So it's really important to look at a really broad audience of where you can get people from. Yeah, that's great. And also, um, as you mentioned before, talking to everyone, you know, the people in your workplace, the people that you know, um, just, you know, really um, getting it out there that you, you are running a class. And as you say, you never know, people might be interested in, in coming along. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so what kind of people come to your classes? It's, it's been quite, quite a variety. Um, it did, definitely took us at least six months to get regular attendees. So for our first months, we probably had a few classes with nobody. We had a few classes with one or two people. Over time, more people. But at, at the moment, um, in the classes, we're actually getting a few couples, which has been nice, people that want to come together. That's been a new trend I've seen over the past year. But we've also had daughters or sisters come along. I think that's really nice for people to bring someone along to share in the experience. And I think people are a bit nervous about going to a group by a friend or a buddy there or someone they're related to. It helps um, help us give them someone to practice with outside of the, of the class, but also um, can ease any of that anxiety about going to the class. But I've, I've had people of all ages. I've had children come along with their parents' caregivers. I've had people that, although they haven't expect, they're in their 60s or 70s, and I've different age groups, some students, international students, um, different people that are from will be honest about being from different cultures as well. So it's been really nice to share meditation with, with a really wide range of, of people. Mm. And I agree with the buddy thing. I, I found that um, most of the people that come to my class come with a buddy. And yes. it, it just keeps them um, accountable to each other and to their meditation practice. And they've got a reason to come along rather than, oh, no one will care if I don't go. Um, it, you know, they've, they've got their buddy, they come along together, they enjoy it together, they interact well, you know, with the others. And uh, there's always um, um, a good energy, you know, when there are buddies in the group. And um, the different types and styles of people, the different types of people that come to groups, that is great too. I, I've had um, teenagers and, um, you know, men and women and different cultural backgrounds. It's really, you know, it's quite diverse and it's nice to know that, you know, um, we, we appeal to all those, those different um, uh, people with all our different styles of meditation, which is, yeah, which is fantastic. Um, so 
did you have, uh, when you have mentioned that you had some challenges along the way with people not coming to the class, and I think, you know, most of us have had, have, have had that occur. So what, what did you, how did you overcome that or what did you do when that happened? Um, how did you feel? I, th I think it is quite common and it can still even happen now that um, there may only be one or two people and there's the in colder winter months because I have some evening classes where I think people it's too dark or cold or they're unwell or they don't want to leave a, a, a warm house so I think um, to overcome it, I guess acknowledging that it can happen and it can still happen for leaders that have been practising for, for many years. And some of those things are outside of our control. I also think that meditation is an activity that you can practise at home. You don't need to leave the house. So I would really hope that people at home, and I can't really control that obviously, but I also know that if you are unwell and it's cold and um, it's dark, you could meditate at home, whereas an exercise class or a language class or something like that, you might feel like you have to go because you can't practice those things at home alone. So um, I guess in terms of advice or suggestions is knowing that it can still happen and it's quite common to try not to lose heart and to know that it's not you or the materials, but it really is those individuals and what's going on with them. In terms of letting people know, I certainly offer my, my phone number to SMS or call if they can't make it to let me know if they can or can't on the online platforms like Meetup and Eventbrite, um, but also to let them know when I have a holiday break. So if I haven't seen someone for a while, I might send and I remind and encourage them to come back, but also to let them know that we do have a holiday break so people aren't unexpectedly showing up on the wrong date and there's no class and they get further disappointed again. And I like to remind people that meditation is, um, I guess, it's not something that you'll be perfect on straight away. So I even say, you know, at your first class, it is a practice. Your body and mind are getting used to this. It is something that, that comes with time. But really practicing is the best way to get better and attending a group is that way to be motivated by others as well. Mm -hmm. I do find that some people say, I'll come to a group to meditate because I wouldn't do it at home. There's so many distractions and things at home that yeah. by leaving the house and coming to a group... <laughs> yes, yes, I, I find the same. I find the same. It, 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 um, they say, oh, it doesn't, doesn't work as well for me at home or, you know, they are, they're way too distracted. Whereas at, at a class, they... Um, they have that, that full and focused attention um, there. So, yeah, that, that, that always works well. And you're actually running two, two groups now, aren't you? Yes. So I guess over time I've also tried to vary the times, days, participants, um, what suits them. It, I still do have a 7 p.m. Sunday evening course but over the years, I've also tried a Friday evening and an 8 p.m. Sunday class, as in running straight afterwards. About asking the participants what suits them, um, putting it out. You might find that different times suit different people. But yes, at the moment, I do a Sunday evening and a Monday evening in different locations, but they are about 20 away. So I say to people, come to the one that suits you, but if you couldn't make the Sunday you could come to the Monday and also to let people know that whilst we have the blocks of um, a theme they don't have to wait to week one to to join in they can join at any time so if they do miss a, a week or a few weeks try not to jump back in at any point class plans okay no that's that's great um and so where to from here, Emma? Do you have any special plans? Um, I think for me it's a continuous process of, of advertising, of promoting the class, um, but also in sharing the information that I have with my class participants. So I always encourage people from my own website and groups um, to share any resources they have with us, or any books or readings or things they've shared along the way. 
to attend some of the School for Mind re re retreats. And there's also the, the School for Mind YouTube channel. And over time, I have actually downloaded those and listened to them or had them in class. Remind people there's actually a lot of material on the School for Mind YouTube channel they can listen to um, in their own time as well. Um, I guess my future plans are to look at extending that meditation into um, other areas of practice. So I'm interested in um, for people when they're helping things like social workers, but also teachers and anyone else that does work with others because that takes quite an emotional toll. So I'd be interested in, in sharing, you know, what I've learnt or sharing from others about how we can care for ourselves and we also care for other people. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, and what would be your biggest tip um, to, what, what's your biggest learning or what would you like to impart to other new leaders about either the program or the classes or anything that stood out for you? Sure. Um, probably a couple would be to not give up, to, it, to know that it can definitely take time to build your attendance and your regular attendance. Um, to, to have faith that the good messages and the good practices that we share in meditation will get out to the world and will get out to those that, that need it. Another tip around advertising is to try and make it advertising a continuous process, not just at the beginning or a block, but really look at five or six ways you can advertise and how you can keep promoting on those channels. So I used to just have a simple list of five or six places to advertise, whether that's is in notice boards or newspapers or in the shop or the library and or the online and really making a bit of a checklist about every month or every fortnight I'm going to add something new to these platforms mm -hmm. um, because those platforms change people go to different environments often but there'll also be new people online on those groups so if you keep advertising something you are going to get new people interested and, and involved and I do know it's quite challenging in the winter and cooler months. So we'll say, I um, mean, you know, please bring blankets or cushions extra to what's in the room. I have um, a kettle and herbal teas. And I know other leaders have um, done things to make the space warm and, and comfortable as well. Yes, um, coming up to winter, I have noticed the same and I've done as you do. I bring in um, organic teas and I bribe them with food so I might make some bliss balls or in summer when it was really really hot I, I took silly pictures of myself with a great big watermelon and yeah um, I, I think you know sometimes you, you do just need to go go a little bit extra um, and show your personality um, but it, on to marketing as well it, as you say it's so important to market over such a, you know a wide variety of platforms. Um, whether, you know, social media. Another one that I've just come across is um, Google My Business. That's, um, you know, I've actually had some contact from Google My Business and it's something that I'd sort of forgotten about or hadn't really utilised. And and um, that and Facebook and, um, you know, as you said, um, community centres putting up flyers, um, having a list and being consistent and regular with your posts. Um, and also getting into uh, the um, Facebook groups and offering hints and tips, maybe just taking them through a little meditation or a meditation tip um, and not just dumping um, your advertisement into the group but adding value to the group and people get to know you. Uh, so, so, yes, your advice is, is um, just be spot on there and that's, that's what we need to do to keep it consistent and... and um, uh, spread the word. Absolutely. Hmm. So does anyone have any questions for Emma? Or comments that they, they'd like to make? I just want to say that it's um, in, like nice to hear how she's marketed and you know she's giving us all some good ideas on getting out there. So thanks Emma. Oh, Thank you. And yes, every community is, is different. I think a mixture of online and I guess advertising in the physical space is, is good. So there's, there is community notice boards or the street nearby. 
Um, I did try letter drops in my area, so printing off um, mm. copies, that might be an option depending where you live and whether it's suitable as well. Um, but just really thinking forward and looking at like-minded business together. So, yeah. And, you know, when you're first starting out, it's really hard to know what times will suit people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah like that's a we should uh, put some suggested times. I don't know whether it varies from community to community or whether there's some commonality that, you know, Monday evenings and Sunday mornings or whatever yeah. work best. I've never really done any sort of an assessment, but it might be good to, I don't know, get some sort of survey to find out when people are running their classes and if there's any commonality we could actually put that up and say, well, try this time because this seems to, on average, work better for, mm -hmm. for a lot of the leaders. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, yeah, so I've, um, or just on times, I've found that, uh, you know, a lot of the leaders would run a 7.30 p.m. because that works with people, you know, coming from work and home and they've, organise their family dinners and you know they've got time and space to to then leave um and you know the the day or um I, I i do feel strongly that it does need to suit you because obviously there needs to be some consistency and you need to be consistent with it so the day that suits you um and i you know i've had people say oh sunday night i don't know but um or sunday morning but it obviously does work for you on a Sunday night, Emma, and and I think you know if you put it out there that that's you know there are going to you want to offer the class on a Sunday night. If people are available, they will, they'll come to a Sunday night class or even a Sunday morning class. You just you know you never know. But yes, you can certainly try and maybe do a, a poll, maybe a Facebook poll with a group, or um, uh, just you know try a couple of different times, but. Um, of an evening, I, I find that you know, a seven thirty is good, and whatever time suits you. But and some people aren't sure about Sunday nights, but obviously they do that. Yeah, I think every community is different, and even on your um, advertising, you could pick a time, but you could also say, contact me if you prefer a, 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 a different time or day. So you're giving people both options. And I think weekends sometimes people do go away and things like that, but. Um, I also look, there's, there's different options and you can't really find a time that is going to suit everyone, but finding a time that suits the leader the majority of the time. And I've been really fortunate to have some other leaders um, cover my classes when I've been away and things like that. So having a community of leaders wherever you are in the world is really important. Um, we can't always attend all of the classes, but if you can have that group wherever you are, it means you can support each other as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, no, that's great. Do you have, uh, we've actually um, got unlimited time on this call, so if anyone, has, <laughs> if anyone has any questions, any further questions? Peter, did you want to um, talk a bit more about the affiliate program? Oh, uh, no, I think we've, we've covered that. Uh, we'll, we'll stick to um, Emma's, Emma's story. And um, yeah, no, you sort of answered my question. I was going to say, um, you know, one leader I know has been sick for a bit and so her classes have dropped off. Uh, and I imagine that kind of actually has quite a bad effect that once people sort of stop getting out of the habit of going, they may not uh, so readily come back again. So to have that, um, <clears throat> whereas you've had, um, you know, someone cover your classes so that the consistency keeps going through. Um, yeah, that's that's helpful. Um, so yeah, just sounds good. That and and I agree. It's good to to catch up with other local leaders in your community, and you know, even do your own class with two of you. You know, um, this is also good. Yeah. absolutely. And I think. Um, yes, and looking at leader training, you know, it, it can be a responsibility and a task to start up a group on your own. So it can be good to get two or even three people together from the same area and you all coordinate the class together. You could take it in turns. There's a whole lot of 
variety there so that it's not just up to one person every single week because yeah. particularly when you have low numbers it can get a bit disheartening if you feel like you have to go every week but if you're sharing it with a team well, at least you can practice with each other too yeah. and right. also attending each other's classes um because i know you know in our in my area i had a couple of leaders and one of the leaders we would go to each other's classes and cover each other's classes when you know either of us was away or sick or something yeah, that, that certainly helps with the consistency of, of the class and also to be able to sit and experience a class rather than having to deliver the class, you know, you're actually, and you pick up the other person's style or delivery or, you know, just the way that they teach um, and uh, that's, that's always helpful. Absolutely. Mm. All right. All right. So, um, Yep, I'll leave it open to any more questions. I don't have anything that's come up on the on the page. But um, uh, if anyone, Yelena, I'm not, not sure if you would like to um, ask a question. There is a chat box, so if anyone wanted to put a question in the chat box, please feel free. But. Um, Oh, Ros, actually, Ros is just Okay, yeah, no. So, no, I, I don't actually have any more questions. That's okay. Thank, thanks, Suzanne. I think the leader learnings is a great idea. People can listen back to them and can stop and pause. And if you have any questions or comments, anyone, please feel free to ask me in, in the group as well. I think having the group around online is, is fantastic. Um, I remember starting off that group and there weren't many people there. So it's been fantastic to see the group grow and really stretch around the world. And we can all learn so much from each other as well. Yes, definitely. I, I think the, um, the leader group is just so valuable, one of the most valuable parts of the program because um, there is so much support in there and, and uh, we're always learning new things from, from other leaders and, and the research and information that others put in there is really ha helpful for you to put into your own groups and, you know, just help with, um, uh, you know, growing your own knowledge and, and being able to perhaps, you know, do a presentation somewhere or, or just, just to ask for um, simple advice or encouragement for new classes, you know, for new leaders running their first classes and that. Oh, it's really great to see the results afterwards. Absolutely. All right. We'll wrap it up there. And um, thanks very much, Emma, and uh, everyone else for joining. And, um, yeah, hopefully you'll get some more questions over the week as people watch this video. And we'll look forward to the next Leader Learning. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening. Okay, right. Thank you Thanks so Emma. much, Emma. Thanks for dropping in, everyone. Okay. See you. Bye.